Hey there, lovely soul, and thank you for joining me for this energy update about the April Stargate. So it is currently April 6, 2021. I'm coming to you just at 6 p.m. actually on the dot, as a matter of fact. And I have been guided to um, put together this video about this Stargate and just the general energies surrounding the Stargate. Now, first off, if you haven't seen my video yet about our monthly Stargates, go ahead and check it out. I'll put a card up here. I'll put a link in the description, but it's really important that you check out that video because I go into really the ins and outs of Stargates in general in that video and um, you can just watch that video for that complete information. But I will say here that we do have monthly stargates and they are 10 days plus a landing day. They do start on January 1st and they go all the way through December. So for January, it starts on the 1st, so 1-1. One, one. For May, would be 5-5. Five, five. For October, 10-10. Ten, ten. And for December, 12-12. 12, 12. And that it would be your starting day. So 12-12 12, 12, uh, to for, and then you count um, 10 days. And then we land on our, um, so 12-12, 12, 13, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21 would be our 10 day stargate the 22 would be our landing day would be the 11th day so it's kind of like saying we're traveling for 10 days then we stop at port everybody gets off either your rocket ship your ship your train however you want to see it i always feel like like we're boarding a rocket ship and we're literally traveling for 10 days and then we have our landing day not to say that we don't feel the energies of the Stargate for a few days before or a few days after the Stargate, but we do have our set parameter of days for the Stargate. So just to get that out of the way, every month we have a Stargate. Every month it's 10 days plus a, a one day uh, landing day, which makes it an 11 date gate for us and as you can see going through the the year it starts at the very very beginning of the month with one one and as we make our way through the year at 12 12 it's further it's already 12 days into the month when we start our stargate and then we're landing at that 22 day with not much left to the month or the year afterwards and that's because we we enter the we enter the year with uh, a wider set of possible timelines. And that's how January starts off with the first, with a wider set of, of timelines to set up the rest of the month. So when we go from 10, 10 1 to 10 11 with our landing day, then we have that whole rest of the month to get those um, those timelines in order. And as we go through the year, we have that exact same experience, just going a little bit further and further and further into the month, creating more of a separation and a and a crossing over between um let's say uh the stargate in november at 11 11 and our stargate in december at 12 12. The, that period is encompassing very a balanced energy between November and December, whereas the period between January and February Stargate is mostly January, setting up for the timelines to come after that. So that's something to consider. Okay, so that's your general Stargate information. Secondly, what we're going to talk about is April, the April, this Stargate, what we're getting into with this Stargate. And it started on the 4th, so 4-4. Four, four, so that was our first day, 4-5, four, 4-6. Four, so this is officially our third day of the Stargate. And the theme for this year, I'm sorry, for this month, for the April, but for the month of April Stargate is connection to your angelic guidance. So your guardian angels and 
archangels, dragons, every all of them that that are of angelic origin. So your guardian angels, your miracle angels, your healing angels, archangels and dragons are also of angelic origin. So the month of April and especially in the Stargate, energies are really coming in to help waken us up, tap us into our connections with our guardian angels, especially the one guardian angel, like our guides and guardians, every, all of them are it's like the veil is thinning during this time to really allow for us to feel their energies, to hear and see the synchronicities, to hear the, the messages coming through, to see things in a different way. But mostly we need to kind of rein that in and think about, okay, who is at the very like front lines of our spiritual guidance on the other side? And we have many divine beings and entities that are there for us. We're never alone, aside from our own soul. And that is really the, the mecca of who and what we need to connect to is our own soul. And all of our spiritual guidance and energy work and healing work is to connect us to our soul, to get that first hand knowledge and I always try to impose this vision see yourself as the avatar in the body with the cord connected to your soul and your soul sending down through the controllers through uh, through the control um, the information that you need to give you the best outcome in any given situation and the smoother the smoothest journey on your way but for help and we do need that help from other divine beings namely our guardian angels now we each have one guardian angel um, and I know some spiritual teachers say we have two we have three we have one well we have one um, like the our number one guardian angel that is always very in very very close proximity to us just kind of floating in our atmosphere here then we have our healing and our miracle angels and they are definitely attached to us work with our guardian angel and come in in a split microsecond when we need them but they're not like right here with us they're more like outside at the perimeter kind of seeing you know kind of just in in wait but paying attention and keeping your keeping the energies around you as clear as it possible as they possibly can for you wherever you happen to be on your journey but that number one guardian angel that's with you right here all the time is really the one that this month of april and this time uh time set of timeline um i always think of timelines when i think of stargates but this stargate is about setting yourself up for a greater um, connection a greater relationship a greater way to hear and feel and understand and be guided by your guardian angel and so there's going to be a lot coming through for you at this time um, as well as, as far as I should say, as far as guidance, as far as just kind of having maybe a higher perspective, being guided, kind of slow things down. Um, if you feel yourself kind of moving quickly and in Stargates, things tend to move quickly. We tend to be like have these intense feelings and emotions and want to express or move through things and, and let's go, let's go, let's go. Because the nature of a Stargate is really about solidifying fine collapsing and um creating timelines and the the more in tune we are with our guardian angels the more confident we can be in creating our timelines and making choices timelines equals choices choices equals timelines we don't make choices without creating the uh, steps in timelines or dissolving steps in timelines when we make choices to um to possibly let's say 
uh, where we find ourselves upset, frustrated with the situation, and then we aggressively uh, uh, express that to a person who's attached to it and come at them negatively and, and accusatory and all this sort of stuff because we're frustrated, there's a chance that, that a very good chance that those behaviors, actions, and and choices are going to create um, a whole different set of circumstances because of the way that we approached it rather than maybe being slower about our fr and thinking about our frustrations and not reacting and not like verbally diarrheaing all over somebody and and then putting it off on them and then them reacting to the situation and then you know causing a chaotic or dramatic situation with somebody we we can still be frustrated about a situation but going about we can have infinite ways we can go about anything right so our lives are literally built on our choices and if we make our choices from a higher vibration from a higher station from a higher perspective of how we're viewing the world how we're interacting how we're behaving how we're how what our expectations are for ourselves for others for time for anything that has to do with the natural progression of our lives we to see all of that from the station of being guided from our divine counterparts and no one knows your story your situation your experiences your body your energy your your grievances your elations your what makes you blissful what makes you sad more than your guardian angel and so so the reason why this comes in at this time in April is because there's so much intense work happening with um, January and February and then March really really intense energies um that come in for us um we have the pillars of creation the divine union um the ascended masters and then we end up with this fourth month with our spirit guides and especially our guardianship our guardian angels and that's when we this time period is when everything is set into a special into a the right um, the right framework in this fourth month for us to be able to connect. So there's a lot of really intense energies. It's like January is still like barely everything is so raw and fresh and new and things getting um, situated in January still from the last year. It very much feels that way. Um, it definitely did this year and um, and then we really work hard um, with out uh, with our February Stargate is about divine union now don't think that that actually means divine union with somebody else or soulmates or twin flames that's truly number one divine union with yourself with your soul that would that's why it comes first it comes before even the ascended masters time um timeline stargate so the ascended masters comes in the third month and that's when the portals open up to help us connect to gaia to jesus to krishna to buddha to anybody that you know of and consider to be an ascended master those timelines those doors swing open and for those of us who are ready to receive that higher level guidance to help us through the rest of the year those doors swing open those timelines swing open and codements come down for, to activate within our dna we're guided towards people places things um healing healers crystals um things to acquire things to understand things to bring into our knowledge to help expand us out and then we get into our for our fourth month with guardian angels so kind of set the stage here for our for our um for our our year in the in the way that we begin with the stargates 
So with that said, so knowing that this month is all about connecting you or or connecting you further. So if you're somebody who's like, oh, I'm already connected with my guardian angel and archangels and dragons and and beyond that, Faye, the galactics, Gaia and all, all of that. Great. Fantastic. This is just going to get you that much more connected. It's going to um, really um kind of push the buttons on the elevator rising to those higher destinations of your ascension so you can bring in more knowledge um not just from um not just you know generally to help you throughout your day but very specifically um again circling back so it's always like circling back to connect you with your soul um that is number one because you're here um in it in a body uh, and you have a soul mission you have a destiny you have a purpose and being connected with our guides and our guardians and our own soul helps us get there helps us live out our purpose helps us live every single day from us from a, a real comfortable place of being um, in our purpose being authentic being guided so I think that's the, the the gist of it when it comes to this portal as far as the theme of it. Okay, now energies to be aware of when it comes to Stargates and Stargates in general is um, kind of generally feeling frustrated, anxious, stressed, tired, confused, foggy, um rushed things like that um but it's not all of that but it's definitely kind of set more um that we feel is kind of more shadowy because of the nature of kind of testing <laughs> where you're at with your um with your energy with your physicality with your spirituality with your communication with how you're relating to others so things will pop up kind of like whack-a-mole like we kind of turn the dials kind of add to the tension kind of turn up the heat a little bit make the the water churn a little more turn up the heat on the fire make the winds blow a little bit more kind of shake the earth a little bit during timeline um sorry stargate times and when we're working on timelines to force us to feel to react and that is truly it's truly, I don't know of a better way to put it other than we are tested through the energies and what to be aware of. So what's really important to think about during a Stargate is, and leading up to the Stargate, definitely to remind yourself in a Stargate is about your reactions. Frequency, maintaining your frequency and monitoring and controlling your behavior, your reactions, your communication, your energy in general. What are you, what's all going on in here and what are you sending out? It's really simple. Think about it. <clears throat> really take time to think about where you're being pushed with your energy, what it's bringing up and what it's um, kind of, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. And what it's pushing you into feeling and doing. And definitely taking time to stop and think, especially if things are feeling like you're, you know, on the neg if you're if you're kind of veering into negativity and going down in frequency, and especially if you're involving other people, pull over. Okay? Pull over energetically, take some time. Think about, think about where you're at. Think about the reality of the situation. Think about how you feel. <clears throat> think about how you want to and what kind of energy you want to put out into the world, into the universe. And that's where you're building your timelines. So things and, and energies, and I see it every single month where we're a day, two days, three days into the Stargate. And I can witness on the micro and the macro people, you know, it's kind of like how people react to the full moon. But Stargates are even more intense. 
and they last for a long time now we definitely have full moons in a stargates we're not dealing with that yet it'll happen later on in the year but we will definitely have that um either full moon new moon it's it's a very cyclical thing how it works through the years and when stargates happen and it how that works in with full moons new moons eclipses meteor showers asteroids um, all that kind of stuff and, and beyond, um, stelliums and different, um, variations with our planets as well and how that factors into Stargate. So things to definitely consider and, um, just be aware like how, and, and not only for yourself, but what you're witnessing in the world, what is coming out in, um, for the collective to 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 bring in um kind of on a global scale um positives negatives things that usually in time <coughs> in stargates we have revelations epiphanies um, um information things come out truths revealed um or you know people being or things being brought out into the world for us to really focus in and pay attention on causing a major reaction um there's like i said there's usually one or two things and it's not and it's sometimes it's global sometimes it's regional but it's happening throughout the time the i keep wanting the same timeline it's happening throughout the stargate to solidify to again create solidify and dissolve these timelines on the ma macro and the micro so we all individually are always creating timelines we're dissolving timelines and we decide no we're not going to do that i'm not going to continue a relationship with this person i'm not going to go to that job anymore i'm going to stop living here or i'm going to go on vacation i'm going to um buy that rv and start taking road trips all of these are choices and all of them are timelines <clears throat> that become created and what we do and then everything else that's connected to those things people places situations circumstances experiences all of our choices individually are all of our choices collectively that that move in the way that energy flows throughout our world and creation so again being mindful of your energy not making quick decisions about um about especially ne being negative sitting in negativity um kind of lassoing other people up in our negativity really taking time again pulling over checking out the energetic weather and seeing what that means to us and and making micro decisions instead of instead of big um the bigger decisions and so if it's like i'm gonna go tell this person off it's like okay how about and going instead of going and telling this person off I'm going to make a micro decision to give myself until tomorrow and think about it and really maybe write out how I'm feeling, keep it to myself, maybe talk to somebody else, see how that goes first um, and and not make any big booming decisions on in any way and just give yourself some time remember mastering your frequency is about being mindful and not being reactionary it's being um it's being uh patient with your own energy and the energies around you remember fear frustration um judgment guilt anger sadness all of those energies we tend to want to get away from as soon as possible when they come up which will make us react in certain ways so we'll automatically shift that energy and so really to master your frequency is to not reject and never feel those shadowy negative energies but it's to, it's to acknowledge them and honor them and not want to get rid of them and put them out and get them away from us but just let them sit and feel in that for a little bit before we react to them okay now um as far as 
real ascension symptoms that what we're going to feel um, during this time, especially during the Stargate, will be um, headaches, uh, like the third eye thing going on. And third eye headaches are different than other headaches. So, and they can, and you can also confuse them with allergies. So if you have a lot of post nasal drip, your, your nose is just, you know, you have to blow your nose a lot. Um, and even sneezing. So I know when my, I start tapping in, my third eye starts really getting active. I'll, I'll sneeze my third. I will like sometimes just have a lot of the, you know, the mucusy stuff. Um, just in general but at this time with this stargate we're really like activating that third eye to let us perceive and hear and see psychically telepathically so we can connect with our guardian angel better and better so that means opening up opening up opening up that third eye um i know that for myself literally on the fourth i woke up and i was sneezing and i was all of like having to blow my nose like crazy and just a bunch of you know clear snot mucus just nothing else than just third eye stuff and it lasted most of the day and it's kind of been this way since then it was it was really intense on the fourth and it's kind of backed off a little bit but I my nose is still kind of like not a big time running but it's just a little running this for three straight days and I'll have these like little fits of my sneezing happening and and just being extra sensitive to light that sort of thing um so that's definitely a thing um joint pain especially in the upper part of the body and the shoulders um even feeling that joint pain up in the ribs um down the spine uh uh, the heart chakra is definitely being opened and activated more and more right now because we are connecting, even if it's subconsciously, we're connecting with our guides and our guardians more, our guardian angel more. Um, if you're um, just, you know, things popping into your head really randomly, um, that is a sign that that's going on as well. Um, and... So, so joint pain, especially like shoulders, hands, arms, that sort of thing, up into the neck, you're going to definitely be feeling um, that little bit of tightness, just this whole area, more upper body um, being uncomfortable. You okay, puppy? Okay, sorry. She's... Hey. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so joint pain, shoulder pain, up in the neck, so feeling tight, so definitely something to think about is to, um, if you can, soak in a bath with Epsom salts and your crystals, release the tension that's coming up, release, there's definitely going to be shadowy energies coming up to help us transmute and release them so we do tend to kind of lock up when these things happen and that will help so the longer you can spend in the bath or in you know water in a river in the ocean of course that would be fantastic but if anything take nice long showers and um and if you can for sure take um baths as well baths would be um at the top of, of really helping you to alleviate energies um, that are need to come up and off of you and as far as more ascension symptoms go um, just general eye disturbances just having a hard time on um, focusing finding that you're more fatigued looking at your screen after a shorter amount of time will definitely be part of it because stargates are really um, they're fueled by our Sun by the light codes from our sun coming down, moving everything. Again, I'm not going to get into all the mechanics of the Stargate. Please watch that other video. But I will say that um, the energies that come through from a Stargate involves our star, our sun, bright lights, major energy. So 
whether we're outside or not, we're on this planet receiving these energies, receiving these light codes they are coming in through our entire system. We're filtering through energy from our third eye and our crown chakra as my nose runs. <laughs> and um, that is going to make our eyes a little wonky. So we could, you know, you could go to put on your glasses and that doesn't feel right. You take them off. That doesn't feel right. You feel your eyeballs are a little, you know, off and fuzzy. Maybe normally you can look at your phone or your PC or your, or your, um, your, uh, your iPad or whatever for your tablet for, you know, hours and hours and you're noticing, wow, it's just a couple hours and my eyes are tired and the, the light coming from it is not fun. <laughs> like it's bothering me more than it normally does. If that's the case, just listen to your body and take a break. Get away from um, the, the screens. Just give yourself some time off. Um, okay. As far as digestion goes with or metabolism, things like that, you might get very, very basic in what you want to eat. Um, we tend to kind of go from kind of normal appetite, normal eating to reduced eating. And I'm definitely hearing that a lot of people with their appetite, it's either going to get very simplistic um, or and or less. So you're going to want to eat more simplistic type meals and eat less, uh, less meals. Um, I would definitely guide you away from caffeine and caffeinated type drinks because the energies that's already coming through are intense to transmute and to acclimate to and to, um, um, integrate with. So please stay away from caffeinated drinks. I'm just being guided to tell you that. Um, you may be more into potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, things like that, earthy type foods. Um, it, it would it would be really good for you at this time. Of course, fruits and vegetables. Stay away from processed foods if you can. Um, dairy and meat, of course, is going to be more complex and, and more difficult for the body to uh, to digest. And so uh, just try to keep it simple. You'll probably be guided that way anyway. And um, drink a lot of water. You may find yourself being more thirsty. Um, so try to keep that as well. Simple drinking a lot of water will definitely help the body process um, um, out energies and bring things up definitely through the readings that I got for all of the zodiac signs for April water is definitely and always is but definitely came up a few times to really connect with water connect with the moon connect with the sun connect with Gaia number one to help you ground in your energies this will also help with kind of feeling floaty and foggy and disconnected that tends to happen during a stargate as well hard to stay on point with what you're thinking hard to even start certain things because it's just the energy isn't there again fatigue and needing to keep things simple is definitely the way to go so move things around accordingly and don't push yourself um, you may need extra sleep you may find yourself going needing to go to sleep earlier and sleeping in later you if that's the case or and even taking naps during the day because a tight uh, I keep wanting to say timeline because stargates will definitely do that to us we will we will get tired and fatigued in the middle of the day or at some point in the day where the sun is still out and we will be guided to go and lay down. So I definitely suggest that if you're guided to do that, don't see it as a weakness. See it as another place, another dimension for you to connect with your guides and your guardians. And remember, when you're asleep, your consciousness is turned off. So you're working from a subconscious uh, state. Your body is relaxed and your soul can um, come out of the body and rise in, in dimension. Of course, you're always connected until your last day and breath. Your soul is connected to your body so you can rise up. And we are told time and time again that if we're guided to go to sleep during the day, um, follow your body. 
understand that that your body your soul your spirit your energy is picking up on things that you maybe consciously don't understand you just get tired and you're like oh my gosh I really need to lay down. If that's the case, and if you can follow that, do it. Don't fight it. Don't think, oh, I'm not going to lay down and take a nap. That's weakness. And I'm a grown up. And, you know, that's for babies or whatever. No. Laying down and getting into astral, taking a nap, even if it's two or three hours, so be it. Do it. And if you're up, and if you're up later, don't fret over that. And, um, if you don't take a nap and you're like, wow, it's nine o'clock at night and I'm exhausted. I need to go to sleep because I can't stay up till my normal 12 or one. Then go to sleep. See yourself waking up at two or three because you're supposed to be up at that time of the night. When it's quiet, when the sun is down, when the moon is out and you can go outside and be under the moonlight and get those um, energies and light codes and activations. We will naturally be up and down at very specific times to get what we need. The problem that a lot of people do is fight it, block it, stand in the way and try to control it. Now, I know not all the time, not every day can you just lay down and get up whenever you want. Um, I understand that. But follow that inner guidance, your your um, your body speaking to you about what it needs um, at any given time. And and also, if you don't know check in with your with your guardian angel just put it out there the more that you talk with your guardian angel telepathically or verbally um the more you'll get back the more you'll receive and it's just like any relationship the more you put in the more you'll get out the stronger you uh intentionally um, put energy into your to being psychic and telepathic and and honing in on those on those abilities the more you're gonna and the better it's going to, going to be for you your guidance will and your guides will bring you um along the way to knowing what you need to know at any given time Okay, and lastly, Merkaba and timeline energies related to the Merkaba. Um, this is certainly something that's come up a few times, and I want to refer you back to the full moon meditation that I did for the 28th of um, March. Um, we worked and we I've done this a few times or many times in my um, channeled guided astral meditations that I facilitate, uh, which is working with our Merkabas. And that is really um, connecting together our our um, energy, our our physical body, our energetic body and our soul and putting those things together. And it's we have our. Um, our soul song, our soul song frequency that works from that Merkaba. It's basically sacred geometry. It's like a, a fingerprint where it's, it's completely um, unique to each and every one of us. And it has a certain frequency that's unique to each and every one of us. And of course, we can um, resonate at a very, you know, close frequency with other souls. And typically, that means that we're in a soul group or, or we're at we're at a certain stage in our evolution and ascension to be able to connect with others that are of that same frequency. We're right, we're always kind of like the goal is to rise into our frequency into our soul frequency and to do that we need to connect you and work with our merkabas so that so again that is our own sacred geometry our own um cosmic soul blueprint our frequency and so to sit and think about that and how that relates to our timelines and we have to think about when you were born, you know, where, what day, what time, um, and 
the natural and and put the progression of your life and the timelines and the choices that you've made and things that have happened around you and how that shapes your energy your frequency your wellness your health how you feel about money how, what your fears are um your relationship with other people your communication your emotional intelligence how understanding you are with your empathic qualities if you are are an empath if you are a light worker all of these things are in the program of your Merkaba and the more that you tap into that into that Merkaba the more information you will get also connected to the Merkaba are the Akashic records so the informational system <laughs> The informational system, the files of everything are the Akashic Records. Our other lives are in the Akashic Records. And for us to have better and greater, more uh, clearer information in this life, what's really, really helpful for healing, for clearing, for understanding, for wisdom, for um, for collapsing timelines that would be a part of this this world this this life if we didn't understand certain things so we collapse timelines that would help us to understand if we're not getting this information but and then we collapse those and then we solidify timelines that that work from a set of circumstances of our understanding so the only way to get this information is to take ourselves to the door, to the files of the Akashic Records, one way or another. Um, whether we get our own downloads or we go to others that are also connected that can help us receive that information. But no matter what, the clearest information is going to come through you, your soul, your guides, your guardians, and they're going to help you get to where you need to go to receive this information. Now, a lot of times that comes through in dreams whether it's during the day or at night a lot of times we're connected with our guides and guardians and they take us on a journey in the astral to help us understand our other lives to give us clues to define things for us to help us understand our um, experiences here and how they're shaped and why they are a certain way that they are so we can um, move through this life easier by knowing those things because not only do the Akashic records um, give us clues to our other lives that helps us with this these lives too but they also help us understand what type of karma what type of um, collective karma we're we're connected to to that we're meant to deal with in this lifetime for some it's healing the money wound in abundance for others it's um healing the mother wound and the divine feminine for others it's the masculine for others it's about what it is to have the stigma of being a healer for others it's about um being kind of separate in technology and all sorts of stuff that I see working with people where they have these karmic hooks that they come into this this lifetime with um it's like baggage but it's not necessarily when I say karmic hooks it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a bad thing it means that this is a thing that you're going to deal with working out in this lifetime and to know those things and to move them around in your world really will help you out so again stargates are to help to fine tune your frequency help you with your choices help you with your destiny help you no matter in what time um stargate and timeline um restructuring that we're working with we're always striving to connect with our soul and our guardians but this one specifically is meant for that so use those energies um follow your guidance i will be putting out a a guided astral medita channeled guided astral meditation tomorrow on the 7th of 
uh, April um, to help with a lot of this business with the timeline, with grounding, with our Merkabas, with the light code. So I hope that you join me for that. And also, again, check out the full moon meditation. Just because that was a few days ago doesn't mean that it's expired or it's too late to do it. You can do it and any of my meditations at any time. Okay, and with that said, I want to thank you so much for being here with me to get this information for the April Stargate. I really hope that it's helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I do read my comments and I will respond to you. Other than that, check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org to get information on um, what it is that I do and how I can help you. There's podcasts, there's e books and a slew of information about energy work and um, how to help you evolve now. Again, thank you so much for being here, lovely soul. Have a beautiful April and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.